This is Austin St. John, Jason, the original Red Ranger. You are watching the Morphin Network. So, hello, everyone. This is Morphin Network. It's me, Ryan, a.k.a. Dagger Boy, and my partner, Clement, a.k.a. Red Star. And we have a special guest today. It's right. the Blue Lightspeed Rescue Ranger, Mike Chat. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited. Um, I'm actually sharing uh, this on all of my pages right now. Uh, so give me a second. So I'm sharing it on my personal. Uh, I'm sharing it on my official verified Mike Chat XMA page. And I've been working with this uh, Facebook group. And uh, they have all different martial arts stuff that I want all of the Power Ranger community to know about because, you know, we do so many uh, cool things on, on the show. You guys, the fans, do so many amazing things to support the actors and the show. And I want the rest of the world to know it, not just Ranger fans, but martial art fans. And so there's this site called Martial Tribes uh, that I'm going to share this on. And they're the largest on Facebook. And, you know, they're always looking for interesting content. And we have a series that we're doing with them. And uh, so I'm going to share it because I believe that that uh, these interviews are valuable. Uh, people want to hear uh, from the actors, from people that were on the show. I mean, you know, t over 25 years now of Ranger history, you know, it's one of the top shows worldwide still. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to share this right now. And uh, yeah, uh, give me 30 seconds. Go ahead and uh, talk more to the people. I'm going to share this and we're going to be good. Yeah, guys, so you guys don't know, Mike's an XMA fighter, Extreme Martial Arts. He's also, yeah, so, yeah, he's a legendary Power Ranger. What can you say? <clears throat> and also, you guys don't know it is, Mike, you were actually the first season I watched when I was a kid. No way. I'm serious. I was like, oh I didn't have cable. I didn't have cable when I was like, till I was like five. And then like, literally, my rescue was the first season that came out on my TV. So thank you for starting this journey. <laughs> you and your team. Uh Absolutely, my pleasure. We are we're good. All right. So, first question, Mike, tell us about yourself. Well, uh, I am the former uh, Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue Blue Ranger. It was an incredible opportunity. We'll talk more about that. But uh, I grew up doing martial arts uh, for pretty much my entire life. And I was able to have the privilege to work on this show, be part of the Rangers legacy. I then continued on to help many people in different areas, developing martial art curriculums for the industry, martial arts industry, teaching, acting. Now I'm producing and doing many things. And uh, we'll get into all the details. But, um, you know, I, I got into martial arts watching voice dub kung fu movies on TV and that's how I got started. Uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Japanese uh, manga and different shows. Spectre Man, actually, was my favorite as a kid. As corny and cheesy as it may be, that was uh, amazing to me. And so then I had some friends that actually worked on the Power Rangers show as I grew older, and I thought, I want to do that. So uh, I had the opportunity to, and... Here I am. I'm, I'm living in Los Angeles, California. I travel all over the world helping people uh, train in martial arts, students, uh, instructors, school owners, developing leadership and legacy training programs. And I'm, I'm very lucky to, to, to be able to do what I love and help other people at the same time. So, Mike, my next question is, like, how did you get started with acting? It, it, all, it all started from watching those voice dub Kung Fu movies. You know, the ones <laughs> where it's like, let's fight, right? <laughs> it's like, they would, yeah. they, they would mouth the words and then here we go, right? <laughs> and, then, and then watching them fly through the air, do like 20 moves in a fight scene, weapons, everything, and then land in these amazing poses. I always thought I wanna do that. And mm -hmm. that's what got, my, got, got me started. So. Ever since I can remember, all I would do is mimic the actors that I saw on TV, whether it was the martial arts or whether it was the lines that, that they said, you know, my Kung Fu is better than your Dragon Fist, right? 
and, <laughs> and just imitating <laughs> and mimicking, you know, that was the dream. And so I didn't know any better. Okay, I want to take martial arts. I got to learn. Then the school that I went to did, did tournaments. And so, okay, well, I guess I should compete. If I want to be the best and do movies, then I need to be a competitor. So then I competed for many years, won my titles, and then many, many, many martial artists from my tournament circuit, the North American Sport Karate Association, they went on to do TV and film. My instructor, one of the biggest, uh, uh, longest standing tournament promoters in the country, uh, John Sharkey, he has the AKA Grand Nationals in Chicago, the American Warrior Cup. It's, you know, the most amazing trophy ever. Uh, so he connected me with all these people, but from Ninja Turtles to Karate Kid, uh, stunt doubles, some of the actors, uh, all the way, all the way through, you know, some of the biggest Hollywood films. Then these, these tournament competitors were cast from the circuit to then do these stunt and these acting roles. So for me, that was it. I was like, okay, well then I need to be the top, not just junior competitor, but when I get to the adult division, I need to come out of the gates as number one if I want to be considered. And that, that's how it ha happened. And I was cast by Pat Johnson, legendary stunt coordinator. He um, was the original stunt coordinator on all the Karate Kid movies and the Ninja Turtle movies and responsible for making many people's careers. He helped me get my first start on my first TV show called WMAC Masters for Fox. Mm. Awesome. Mm, amazing. All right. Um, so next question. How did you get started with martial arts? Yeah, so then literally after watching it on TV, then uh, I told, I'm, I don't know, I must have been three years old or something. That's all I can remember. And my parents were always saying, oh, no, it's too dangerous. And my dad... My father actually did Muay Thai because uh, that part of my family is from Thailand. Then uh, he, he did Muay Thai when he was younger. Nothing professional or anything, but, um, you know, both my parents, you know, they had said it's too dangerous, not until you're eight years old. All I can remember is them saying not until you're eight years old. So you better believe for my eighth, eighth birthday, that's what I wanted. We went to three different schools, settled, out, settled on one, and that's when I got started with my martial arts training. Mmm. Mmm. Amazing. Not until you're eight years old. <laughs> All right, so the next question. So my next question is, can you tell us the audition process for Power Rangers for your series? <laughs> for my series, so coming into this, I had no idea it was going to be six auditions. Um, you know, wow. first audition, I'm nervous. I get a call back. I'm excited. I go in. I'm nervous. I get another call back. I'm excited. I go in. You know, you do the same thing one or two times, then they change, and here's a new set of uh, audition material. You got to learn the new ones, coach on it. And uh, five auditions later, we have uh, a producer director session. And um, that's it. They tell us, great, we're going to make our decision. You know, they, they, this is like over the course of almost three months. Mm. And then they sent out contracts and everything. And like, we thought that was it. Um, then there was actually a little, uh, a little hiccup in the process. Um, one of the actors who was given a contract um, didn't work out. And this is where uh, Keith Robinson, the Green Ranger who plays Joel Rollins, uh, he was the next person in line, we had to come back a sixth time. And then there was another, uh, there was another uh, producer director callback. And in this one, Koichi Sakamoto, the second unit director, fight coordinator, he was in the room. He had just come back from Japan. Koichi is the one responsible for, for helping to recreate the show with all of the action uh, to make it what you know it is today. And uh, he recently left the show, Yuji uh, Akihiro Noguchi took over, but uh, Koichi Sakamoto was the mastermind behind all of it. He designed the action, he shot it, he edited it, he, he made that whole thing happen. And he was in the room. I knew him because I worked with uh, uh, Yuji Akihiro uh, on WMAC Masters, but he didn't know I was even in the running until that morning when he came in. So I had thought that I was... I was, you know, there 
and got through this whole process because she knew that I was a top martial artist, but it wasn't the case. So it was an interesting process for me. You know, I had to work my way through with the other 7,000 candidates and it came down to, to five. So uh, really, really amazing process. I learned a lot and that was how I started my journey as a ranger. That's and now you're our legendary Lightspeed Rescue Blue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you briefly explain your experience while in time filming Power Rangers? Uh, you know, we, we would need much more than 30 minutes to explain the entire process uh, and experience. <laughs> you know, what I can say is this. The most amazing thing about Power Rangers is that it's global. To be part of it, and this is what I told uh, the six actors that I helped to train, some more than, than, than the others, but for, uh, for Power Rangers Beast Morphers. There is no other show that, that uh, kids show that when, you, when they air the first season, the first episode, it goes into worldwide syndication. People all over, it's not just shown in one country, it's shown all over the place. And then throughout the year, you know, it, it winds up being seen in many, many territories all over the world. It's global. And everything about the show is glo global. The name, Power Rangers, it's recognized throughout the world, no matter what language you're in. Um, young and old, people know the brand, people know the image of Power Rangers. It invokes an emotion, it invokes a visual, um, that is representative of inner strength and power, teamwork, uh, superheroes, right? Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And the idea of transforming from an ordinary person to something spectacular, that's what I love about it. And everything from the writing, Judd Lynn uh, or Chip, uh, who wrote my episode and is still writing the episodes of the show as the executive producer in New Zealand, um, you know, to the, the team, uh, the stunt team coming from Japan and working with uh, all of the Japanese stunt guys and the American stunt guys and many of the top American stunt guys that started on that show, um, Kido Koda, David Wall, Lynn Oding, uh, Eric Betts. Uh, I mean, many of these incredible stunt people have now grown up to then be stunt coordinators, fight directors, uh, second directors, and first unit directing. Uh, we'll talk more about that because I, I have a great story for you. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, shooting 42 episodes in a normal season, which typically uh, you would shoot 22 episodes in a normal season for a year. But now it's not 22, it's only 13 episodes with shows like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon. So to think that we did 42 episodes in one year, and actually filmed it in eight months, where now if you shoot eight months, a lot of times you're only shooting 13 episodes. The amount of experience we got was incredible. Rotating directors, rotating stunt people, uh, you know, the, the locations that we got to shoot in. Uh, when, when people say, man, you're living the dream. I feel like I'm living the dream every day, not just living here in Hollywood, but being, being able to be creative and, and bring, bring this type of programming and, um, you know, an impact and influence to the world, you know, in a positive way, work with charities and foundations like Ronald McDonald uh, House. I mean, just make a wish foundation. And this, for me, this continued, uh, you know, uh, until now, you know, this is just part of what I do now. So it all started on Rangers. So yeah, amazing experience. Any fun behind the scenes moments or any fun memories that you, that you have while working on the set of Power Rangers? <laughs> What was fun is when you see my, um, my beauty shot at the beginning of the show where you see me jumping off the killer whale, <laughs> diving into the water, and then I come out of the water, right? Mm -hmm. So the expression on my face is, uh, is quite interesting because uh, they said the pool was heated that I dove into that morning, and it wasn't. And so I was expecting you know, it to be cold, not that cold. But it was so cold that, that I could not, I could not, I could barely move. So the only thing that I could do to put on a smile was open my mouth that wide. So if you go back and watch the beauty shot, you'll see 
I'm not doing a regular smile. Like I'm not waving like this. My mouth is like, like that, which is way too over the top, even for a kid's show. But it's because I was so in shock from the cold that that was all I could do to smile. And uh, it's funny when you go back knowing that was the case and, and, um, and then everybody was testing the water and they realized how cold it was. Um, so that was, that was quite interesting. But there's another one where uh, we just watched this clip where uh, one, of the, one of the ending episodes, we were all disguised as different characters and I was disguised as a fisherman and my mustache was flapping in the wind like that. I don't know <laughs> if any of you remember that. But if you go back and you watch that episode, you're gonna see my mustache flapping. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't on purpose. It actually happened during the take and then oh they God. used it because it just, it was actually quite funny, but it, it looks like it was staged and it wasn't. So um, that, that's one thing to watch for. But uh, here's, here's the most memorable moment. You ready for this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. There were many memorable moments on the show. But let's fast forward to 2018. I am in, uh, I am in uh, a party for the, the ESPYs, so the ESPN Awards. And I get a text message from this actor who was a stunt double at the time. He was doubling Brad Pitt and Van Damme and, and Matt Damon. And I had been training him along with his partner, uh, who was stunt doubling Keanu Reeves. So uh, his goal was to star in a movie. Well, uh, I couldn't help him star in a movie, but I could help him get a guest starring role on Power Rangers. So I was able to get him on the audition, casting approved him, and, and we had a great episode with uh, this, this famous stunt double, turn fight coordinator, stunt coordinator, second unit director. You might know him as the uh, stunt coordinator, second unit director from Mad Max. He did many films with Charlize Theron. And now he has broken into Hollywood's elite. He recently did as first unit director, Atomic Blonde with uh, Charlize Theron, Deadpool 2, director and now he's on set in London uh, directing Hobbs and Shaw with The Rock and Jason Statham and as I was in the middle of this after party at the ESPYs I get a text message because I was literally on ESPN we were at the bar watching and I get a text message from David Leach and he says guess who I'm watching on the screen and he texts me a picture of myself and the other commentators and I was like, no way, where are you? And he said he was on location in Hawaii scouting for the film. And uh, we had a great little moment there. But when I asked him, I, 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 said, I said, now you know, now that you know you're a big director, right? I said, Power Rangers cannot be the only or the last time that we're seen on screen together. <laughs> and so... <laughs> I'm expecting him to say something like, ha ha, you know, yeah, we definitely need to do something. And he responds with, he goes, he goes, Brian. That's what he texted back. My name was Brian. And then dot, dot, dot. Yes, I remember my character name. <laughs> and now this is like 20 years ago, right? And uh, it's just so crazy one, for me, how time flies. Two, how, you know, you, you start when you're younger and you have this great collaboration with people and now he's big, a big first unit director and he's, you know, making headway and headlines in, in Hollywood. But what stood out to him was playing that character. And he's like, you know, that was one of his favorite characters that he ever played because typically he's behind the scenes, not in front. And so uh, he remembered his character name. So... If you go back, I've actually got a Power Ranger demo reel. You can, I think Mike Chat Power Rangers. If you look at that, we, I have the fight in there. And you can see the fight clips. But that's David Leach. Uh, I mean, he doubled Brad Pitt in you know, Fight Club and a lot of those films. And now he's the first unit director for Atomic Blonde, Deadpool, and, and the up-and-coming Hobbs and Shaw. So uh, many people don't know that. But that was that character. Eagle Brian. Awesome. Actually... 
I know I said full again. Um, so my next question is, can you tell more? Can you tell us more about? Can you tell us more about XMA? XMA Extreme Martial Arts. It's a mix of all different martial arts styles: uh, uh, acrobatics, dance, gymnastics, the performing arts. The whole concept was uh, not that we were creating a style. What happened was many people on the tournament circuit, TV, and film they were doing all of this Hong Kong style action, but that's what we called it: Hong Kong style action. Nobody knew how to do it, or, 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 or nobody knew how to teach it, except for the stunt professionals. Nobody knew where to go to learn it. So I had a unique opportunity after Power Rangers. I was approached by Century Martial Arts. They're our sponsor, our partner. Uh, they're the largest martial art company in the world. They're amazing. They have the best products. And Century, Frank Silverman, David Wall, they approached me about doing you know, some work together. And we came up with this concept to create a program to help martial arts school owners and instructors deliver this type of training. Uh, you know, retain students in the martial arts schools, keep the excitement up, and then give, give them something new so this way they didn't, you know, they didn't quit so fast. Then uh, we worked together with Maya, the Martial Arts Industry Association, to then deliver this curriculum to schools worldwide. There's over 2,500 schools that, that teach our programs. Um, and then XMA, we launched it with a Discovery Channel documentary that was aired in over 130 countries, translated into over 100 languages. It ran for over 10 years on Discovery. It was pretty amazing. So, um, you know, that's what XMA is. And now it's evolved into leadership programming, life skills, character development. And we take the cool moves from XMA, combine it with leadership. Uh, my partner, Chief Master Von Schmeling of Victory Martial Arts, Victory School of Life, XMA Moves, Combine it. That's our that's our uh, victory leadership program. So now we go. I go around and I train instructors, help school owners, and we de deliver leadership to help students and uh, instructors, business owners, professionals take their uh, take what they're doing to a higher level and to to lead more effectively. Awesome, amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell us your advice to any aspiring actor? Yes. Um, so my advice to, uh, to aspiring actors in general, uh, and if you're joining us, make sure you share this on your Facebook page. It's going to help us spread this word, the word to all, all the people in the community. Okay. So just hit that, that, that share button right now. Then advice to actors are then Einstein says the brain is not designed to memorize. It's designed to create exercising. Creativity is one of the most powerful tools that we have. It's good for our soul. It's good for our brain. The biggest visionaries in the world from Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, uh, Warren Buffett. Then, then these are visionaries because they're creative and they don't do the same thing. They, they, they have different approaches for everything. Then, then as an actor, it's a great way to express yourself. That's part of what acting is you know, uh, recreating or, or creating a slice of life. And in one moment, we see you play a character and it gives us insight into the human condition, human nature, relationships, how, you know, how things are. And we can learn from it. We can be entertained and edu educated. Um, and, and it's really valuable. So uh, to be an actor, it, it, to me, it's one of the greatest privileges you know, if I play a character, that means that I'm representing another person, another life, another another vision, and um, I don't take that very lightly. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but then you know, I want to do a great job. So, so for actors, focusing on what you have to offer and bring to the table is very important. Otherwise, what happens is then your priority focuses to what you think other people want. People want like. Uh, what, are the, what, what does this agent want from me? What do I say in an interview? Uh, okay, I'm going to audition for this piece. I wonder what the directors are looking for. Well, you do need to consider that, but if your focus is trying to appease what other people want, then you're going to deliver what you think they want versus coming from your gut instinct, what you believe uh, is important for you to express for the character. So... That's, that's first and foremost, that's the foundation, you know, to be a great actor, it's all about reacting and coming from your truth and then, and then expressing yourself, you know, through that character, not, 
not just trying to figure out what other people want. And then a great director or casting director is, of course, going to kind of take what you do and they're going to, you know, tweak it and direct you. But, um, but it has to come from you. Mm-hmm. So that's my, that's my advice to actors in general. Can you tell us your advice for an aspiring martial artist? Aspiring martial artists, train. Uh, train, develop your skills, and uh, watch and learn. So you, you train, you compare yourself to videos that you see online. Pretty much everything that you need to know, you can find on YouTube for free. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, why would people come train with me? Well, because in my class and I focus on, I focus on the life skills, the leadership part, my job is to help my actors and stunt professionals book more jobs. You are going to learn how to fight, do the choreography, uh, practice it and film it. But then once you have the skill, how are you going to use that to book work, right? So as, mm-hmm. as a martial artist, then developing your skills, just don't get set on any one thing. Because if you do want to use this for entertainment, then, then rarely are you going to ever punch and chamber your hand like this. It's going to be more like this, right? Then then punching like this only, that's a good way to train traditional basics, but then be flexible and adaptable for any situation, whether it's for traditional training, competition, live performance, uh, stage performance, or actually for students. My last question is, like, do you have any upcoming projects or events that you would like to share with your fans? There's a film that I just finished action directing called My Babysitter, the Superhero. We're in post-production right now. That's gonna be done by the end of the year. Uh, we've got some offers for domestic and international distribution. Uh, I had the privilege of working with this writer, director, Billy Butler, uh, uh, a former Disney producer. So um, we've got a lot of projects that we're working on. So be looking for those. Um, then uh, the next event, I'm going to be in, San Antonio, the 8th through the 10th. Uh, we've got some leadership training, legacy training. Whenever I do these leadership experiences around the country, because I'm not able to make it to, to, to the conventions, then we're helping out our martial arts schools and the schools in our industry. But then in addition to that, these are open for the public. It's just a lot of distortion. Um, then uh, I typically will schedule things within three to four weeks time frame. I typically don't have the flexibility to schedule out further than that. But then you can just keep checking my social media posts. And when you see something, when I'll be in that area, I would love for everybody to come out. Awesome. All right, guys. Let's read your comments. <laughs> so okay. Helmut Brickassack Rick, Rick says, hello from Quebec, Canada. Okay. Um, so, okay. Okay. so when, for me, when, when I saw all those battlings and there was a, an episode in particular where um, uh, a famous second unit director now, Andy Chang, he's, uh, I think he's second unit directing, stunt coordinating Into the Badlands season three. So one of our friends, uh, Louis Tan is on that show. And Andy Chang came, was just here from Hong Kong, he had double Jackie Chan. And he was here to make his mark. And, you know, Andy Chang was on set in a battling outfit, right? Um, it, was, it was amazing. Uh, for me, it was a challenge. Because, of course, as a martial artist, I wanted to do a great job for the stunt coordinator and for the stunt guys and really have some great, great scenes. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to you know, be part of the legacy. Um, so for me, it was amazing. Uh, any any time I get to you know show off my action skills, then uh, you know I'm a hundred percent for that. And it was just an incredible learning experience, uh, a great time, and we we got some incredible results. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, then let's see here. We got next PMC. Mr. Brown. Next PMC, if he comes, uh, would you do Josh and your hands? <laughs> so Ken Brown is asking uh, the next Paramorphicon if uh, Sasha comes, if we can do a, a headstand rematch. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, it was interesting because Sasha and I, they kind of pair the actors together, right? It was Red Ranger, Pink Ranger, Sean and Allison, um, uh, Joel, uh, Green Ranger, and the, the doctor, um, or the, the, the lab, the scientist. And then Sasha and I 
We had a focus episode together, and you know, we just got along. She's incredibly, she's incredibly physical. physical. Uh, you know, hiking, hiking, rock climbing, and she did she did everything. Lots of sports. So then, yeah, we used to <laughs> we used to do stuff like headstands and and uh, you know, you're on set, you're trying to pass the time when you know in between while they're setting up shots. So we had a lot of fun together. So uh, hey, if uh, if we're both there then uh, you just remind me and I'll see if I can wrangle her into doing that, okay? <laughs> um, so the final words of wisdom that I told the Beast Morpher Rangers, we actually have a couple of special interviews that I grabbed with them before they left. So I will let you guys know when uh, we're going to release the interviews. It won't be for several weeks now um, because they need to be edited. But what, one, of the things that, one of the things that I tell them is, you know, they, they do so much in their preparation. So, you know, they're ready. What, what they need to remember is they need to be ready not for what they think is going to happen, not for how, what they plan, they plan for. They need to be prepared for everything that they don't expect. And when they're asked to do it or it happens, then they use their base and foundation so this way they can quickly adapt and then try and try and keep up and, 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 and keep up to speed. So the advice that I told them was, you know, be ready for everything that you don't expect to happen and enjoy it. Enjoy the moment because they're going to blink and they're going to be back here for Christmas. And then they're going to blink and then they're going to be back here in May. They're going to go to the Teen Choice Awards and it's going to be done. The episodes are going to go out, but the filming part's going to be done. They're going to be there for eight to nine months in New Zealand and, and, and just to enjoy every moment. So that, that, those were my parting words to all of them. Um, uh, what was it like training Jackie and Liana? Um, Jackie was newer. She had been with us for about eight, nine months. Liana, I've been training for over three and a half years. Um, both are awesome to train. Why? Because they're so dedicated. Uh, they're, they're high energy, they're enthusiastic, and they're willing to do the work. Um, then, uh, we all have our struggles but it's not what you're struggling with. It's how you deal with it that really makes it so this way uh, we can gauge your true potential. And uh, both of them, you know, Liana has been here. She's worked. She has more experience. Jackie's newer. She's just come here, but she has done some other projects when she was younger. Um, you know, they all have the potential, but it's the ones that find ways to stand out that really push themselves. At the end of the day, um, you know, Liana... Uh, I don't know if I can say this yet, but it'll come out in her story in the casting process. Um, she she wasn't she, the role that she got is not the role that she auditioned uh, uh, originally um, auditioned for. The same was for Abraham. So I won't disclose the details, but interesting story. I'll save it for the interview when we can release it. Um, but uh, it was a pleasure. Uh, and, and I'm sure when they come back, they're going to be jumping back into class. So if you're watching our live events, then you'll see them there. Um, thank you, Nathan. Uh, appreciate that comment. Uh, <laughs> Paul, thanks for commenting. Uh, let's see, Neil. <laughs> Hello from Neil. Uh, Joseph Eli is on with us. Uh, Christopher Soto. Um, did we hate wearing the same outfit each day? Um, you know, it's kind of like, like I go to my stunt class and I wear this shirt and black pants, you know, Steve Jobs said it best at the end of the day, you only have so many good decisions that you can make. So Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, uh, uh, Zuckerberg, they all say the same thing. They wear the same clothes every day, so this way they don't have to waste a, a great decision on what to wear that day. So, so actually, it makes it a lot easier. Um, I, I didn't get sick of wearing the same thing every day. For me, as a martial artist, it was such an honor to be part of the show and to be part of the legacy. It was like I, I couldn't wait to get it on every day. You know, it's like I didn't want to take it off. So that, that's how I felt about it. Um, I don't know about the other actors. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, the best and the worst of f filming light speed. The worst part, 
Oh man, the worst part of filming Lightspeed is when the show ended. And we filmed our last episode and it was like, uh, what are we going to do now? Uh, because it, it flew by like this. Um, the best part, aside from being able to guest star uh, and, and bring David Leach on, um, the best part of filming was the family that we created. Well, the Ranger team, uh, the production company, everybody was already a well-oiled machine. It was a tight-knit family. They accepted us into their family as, as newcomers and you know, we just, we all felt like every time we got together, we just felt like it was family. And um, you're going to hear that from a lot of the Ranger cast that, you know, it was just like family. We became brothers and sisters. We became so close. And we have, we have memories and friendships that are going to last a lifetime. And so that, that was the best part about filming is because every day we went to work and, you know, we were excited. Like we all got along. We still get along. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, then, uh, who's my favorite ranger? Um, really, there's no contest. My favorite ranger of all time is the most popular ranger of all time. Uh, Jason David Frank. Uh, he, he is the king. Um, why? Because he's a martial artist. He actually grew up in uh, Riverside County out here east of Los Angeles. I know his instructor, and we, we grew up in the martial art industry together. So to have a fellow martial artist, you know, play not one, not two, not three, not four, but I mean, continuously coming back as different Ranger characters, you know, to be the most popular Ranger of all time and still out there doing it, hitting the conventions, opening and closing New York Comic Con last weekend. Uh, he, sent, he sent me a little, a little message on Instagram. Um, I mean, he's, he's the king. He's... You know, he's, he had his moment of fame. Uh, he went on to do some other projects. He's, he's back out there, super visible, but he's out there for the fans and for all of you, um, you know, really just giving back. And, and I love that. That's what we're all about as martial artists. So, you know, it's one thing to, to have status, uh, whether it's in entertainment or anything else. It's another to then give back, honor the people who have helped to put you in that position and, and, you know, just as a human being, you know, communicating and having relationships with people. Uh, very important to me. I know it is to him. So JDF, he's the guy. Um, let me see. Uh, watch videos on the big screen. Try the Facebook video. Okay. Um, <laughs> you guys sound possessed. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's like, it's like uh, uh, McGregor. Um, now, although he did win, he did lose his last match, uh, Conor McGregor, you know, he says, I'm not, I'm not disciplined. He says, I'm obsessed. And, you know, in order to reach the highest level of anything, you have to be obsessed about it. And, and for me, I'm obsessed about helping people. I'm obsessed about sharing my knowledge. I'm obsessed about giving back. When many gave to me, mentored me, instructed me, coached me, then I'm obsessed about giving and sharing. So, you know, as much as I can, I want to do these live events and talk to the people, answer questions. I, I love it. I love it. So, yes, possessed, obsessed, whatever you want to call it. Um, oh, my gosh. So, uh, greetings from Greece, Lazaros. Uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, and, yes, you guys can all share this. Please share this on your Facebook pages. That helps us build the community. Um, would I like to go back to the anniversary I was working on another project and the reunion episode, I was not available for two days. Oh, yeah. And because of the schedule, we couldn't work it out. So I wasn't able to go. Ah, I was so bummed. Believe me, they showed the promo at Power Morphica and I was like, oh, I'm not in there. Uh, I was bummed. <laughs> Believe me, would I go back in a second? Like, in a second, for sure. Um, there's no light speed hello, um, oh, oh happy birthday Brennan Mejia yes, All birthday, right. uh, if you're watching happy birthday everybody should go on his Instagram or, or Facebook tell him you saw this live event and let's all wish uh, Brennan a big huge happy birthday uh, I, re I met him recently fantastic uh, guy super talented and uh, he's got some special things coming up that I know he's going to be sharing with you um, I don't know if he posted about it yet, 
but he's he's great and he's been active working on some stuff. So so make sure you go wish him a happy birthday. Okay, I will too. Then um, then uh, birthday. Birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, we're coming to Greece. My wife is a Greek, Turkish, Albanian, Spanish mix, and uh, her mm -hmm. father's Greek. Uh, we're, we're we're planning on coming to visit Greece. So direct message me with any recommendations of where you think we should go. But we're we're going to be planning a trip for either the spring or summer of next year. And uh, yeah, that's it. I think I got everybody. Awesome. Well, there's Hillary. Hi, Master. Kind of. Right. Oh, uh, we're good. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, right, guys. Uh, Jazz, Jazz, the Blue Beast Morpher. If you're watching this, I have your figure right here. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, okay, you guys, you're training him. <laughs> right, so again, so Mike, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Lazarus. Yeah, Lazarus said, "Yeah, when you will come to Greece, contact me." <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, one, one, then, are you yeah, going? Then, uh, are you guys already in touch with the, the Beast Morpher cast? Uh, no, because I think they're still filming, so I don't think we are not allowed to talk to him just to do contract wise. But I mean, I gave Jazz my. Uh, okay. Our, I'll, I'll double. I'll double check that with them um, uh, and production. But I, I, I can. Uh, I, I would be happy if. Uh, if you haven't gotten responses from them, I would be happy to then reach out to them for you. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, please share this on your Facebook pages. I appreciate you joining in with us. You're always welcome to follow me and, and direct message me. Um, if you don't hear back right away, just, uh, just send another message because I, I do get busy and I'm not actually on social media looking at stuff. I post when I need to, but then I don't spend a lot of time. So if I miss you, please make sure you, you message back. But uh, thank you so much for having me, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. All right. So thank you, guys, Clement. So first up, so Clement, where, where can they find you? Yeah, as you can find me, Celial1031, that's on Instagram. and Or you can find me on the Facebook that is on, with the Morphin Network. So check me out. And I got my blue crew here. And we are missing a light speed rescue blue figure, which is sad, but I would like to add Mike into the collection as a set. <laughs> and Mike, where can they find you? Uh, Mike Chat XMA on Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. So you can guys find me, Dancer Boy247, Instagram, and also please follow us, Morphin Network. If you like, like our content, please follow us. But yeah, guys, thank you so much, and thank you, Mike, for taking your time for us. And so, yeah, there's Morphin Network, and yeah, we're signing out. Bye, guys. Absolutely. Thank you.